Hey guys, just thought I'd give you a, a quick update on what we're uh, what we're doing. I'm about to lose the light, so I'm pretty much done for the day today. But uh, I haven't done a lot of video in today. Ooh, fall over the sleepers. Um, so yeah, what we've done is taken off the uh, top two layers of sleepers from here, um, and I'm just finishing off drilling through to the bottom. You can see on my drill bit there that I've got a, a bit of tape, and as you can see, that will then leave me about an inch from the bottom so the rebar obviously will go through the hole down to where the bottom of uh, the drill bit goes and um, we've done that side so far and we've got the uh, third sleeper back up on there I've just now got these two sides on that one to uh, to go but uh, I've flattened all, all my batteries now so uh, yeah, that's that's about it for the day but uh, yeah what I'm also doing to reline up the holes once they're drilled through I've got my 8 mil version of my uh, long drill bit and just making sure that all the holes line up and as you can see there look pull that out and that's then an inch from the bottom down there so that's ideal they're all lined up that side's all lined up as well ready to go and uh, the bottom layer i'll show you on the other side in a second the bottom layer has also been screwed down with the uh, 300 mil screws and that one has as well yet to do this one but as i say my battery is too flat now to put any more any more screws in and um, but yeah so as you can see look these ones are now screwed to these ones and that's the same all the way around so they're not going anywhere the rebar obviously will stop them bending and bowing um, to be honest these screws would have probably done that as well but what I've done is just put the screws in there just to pin them tight together at the bottom there because um, some sleepers are ever so slightly thicker than the others and ever so slightly bowed and that will just stop them bowing um, in different directions if that makes sense so you won't get any sort of curving up like that or curving down like that if they're all pinned together with the screws that will stop them bowing different directions that way and then the rebar will stop them bowing or on this side stop them bowing that way all right so i'll uh, get all my batteries charged up and uh, i'll come back to you tomorrow and uh, hopefully show you a bit more catch you in a bizzle Hey guys, um, just done another day's graft. I've managed to get all the pond back up, which is a bonus. It's all currently screwed in. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six along this uh, long back one in each one of these. And now it's time to put the rebar in. You might hear I'm out of breath, and that's because the big mallet is out. I have just managed to put one of the rebars in. God, they are a tight fit. But I'm going to try and show you how we do it. But yeah, one, obviously I, early, earlier, obviously I took all the top layer of sleepers off, drilled through to about an inch above the bottom. And now I've got to uh, cut the rebar and bash it in. So uh, I'll get another rebar cut. And then we'll get it bashed in. Catch you in a second. Right. So as you can see, I've clamped my rebar in down here. I'm now going to try and cut it. So uh, let's see how this goes. Oh, I haven't even measured it yet. I measured the first one. Up against the pedestal. Line that I put on a sleeper down there. And I've obviously drilled them all to the exact same depth. So I can use this off cut off the first one to measure where we need to cut like so and here we go
have one cut. So what I'm going to do now is show you how I put it in. Okay. On the floor because they're only full off. Anyway. So move you guys. So that's got to go in that hole and all the way down. Let's see if we can find somewhere to stick you guys. There we go. So this has got to obviously go all the way down until it's flush with the top of the sleeper. And just to show you as well, you can see how far it goes through and how far from the bottom it is. You've got about an inch, well, you probably can't see that, maybe only really. about an inch and a half from the bottom. And uh, that will hold them all together. So I'll bash this in and uh, we'll speed it up so uh, you don't have to hear all the banging. Uh, watch me for ages trying to get this in there because they are blooming stuff. That's certainly not an easy job. I'll just quickly show you. All out of breath again now. But as you can see, nice and flush with the wood. And not that it'd have gone anywhere anyway with all them screws in it, but that is now solid as a rock. And once all the rebar's in, I haven't yet, as you can see, I haven't yet. Uh, screwed the top two layers of sleepers together like I have the bottom ones there and once all the rebars are in I pin them all together with the big ass screws excuse my French oh cream cracker right I'm going to try and get a few more of these rebar in before the uh, the light disappears because uh, it's about half three now so I haven't got long left so I'll catch you all in a bit so this is the next fry that's going to be uh, going into the outside pond. He's got an ever so slightly bent head, but other than that, he uh, is it, it, absolutely stunning fish. I'm not too sure what he's going to be. I'm sure Vince uh, from Twisted Koi could probably tell me if the camera will focus. He, when I first got him, he was mostly white with a bit of orange, but uh, the white is now sort of going a a darker colour so I'm guessing Goshki, Goshiki um, along those lines but I don't know maybe even an Orchiba but yeah if uh, if you can tell me what he is Vince be muchly appreciated but yeah he's the next one to go into the uh, outside pond so I'm going to get a bag uh, bag him up and then uh, let him float. They are the same temperature. They're both both uh, the tank and the pond today are exactly 20 degrees. So uh, I'll just introduce a bit of pond water into the bag and let him acclimatise uh, slowly. But he's probably just over four inches now, getting probably close to five. So uh, I'll get him in there now. Catch you in a bizzle.
So here we are, he's been acclimatised, he's got a uh, half tank water and half pond water in that bag and he's been sat there for 10 minutes. The fish have all gone loopy because they know a new fish is about to be introduced. The last one that I put in, he has just been swimming around but he's still hiding uh, under there. Little cave. So yeah, so he's now got another little friend to uh, to join him. And if I can catch it this time, the actual uh, release. because it's a lot bigger and as you can see he's already actually way bigger than the first one that I put in and so that first one was just as I say that was the worst deformed one I had so I thought well I'll try it first see how he gets on but, uh, yeah, it's actually warmer in this pond in here at the moment by 0.1 of a degree than it is in the uh, in the fish tank so there he is gone around there and join the, uh, the big boys so uh, yeah, again I'll let you know how he gets on. And, uh, he's already uh, moved the bag out of the way. Already swimming around. I don't know if you can quite make out there under the bubbles. Yeah, he's not he's not scared. There he goes. Look. Almost looks like the rest of them are scared of him. But we'll see how he does. At least uh, the little tiny one down there has got a friend to play with now. Oh, I even saw him shoot out then. There he goes. Right. Well, so I'll let you guys know how, uh, how he gets on in there. Oh, look. They've made friends already. Um, yeah, and I'll catch you all a bit later.